Do you want me to get started? Or? Uh, the the announcements have just started. Okay. So you you let me know what's going on. Oh, yeah. You know what? Um, I can put the announcements in a small window if you want to get started. In a small window? No. Why is everybody so quiet? Stop being quiet. Keep on talking. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm still doing stuff. You're not supposed to see me yet. This is like still backstage, right? I'm the green room. Eating your purple. You hold the applause, hold the applause. All right. We're, we're rolling through the announcements for the live stream, people. Rick, do you have my mic on? Okay. I have this mic on so we can hear Excellent. you Excellent. Well, that's good. <laughs> good, mor good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, this could make some noise. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Good morning. Oh, no, I'm not asking you to make some noise. I'm just saying when the mic goes on, it might make some noise. Uh, anyways, welcome to Elmville Community Church. My name is Pastor Steve. Um, it's good to be here. Uh, I was away for two weeks, and it's good to be back, uh, as, as usual. Uh, although I, I didn't miss you so much when I was away. Uh, I, it's just the way it works, especially this time for whatever reason. It didn't feel as... I'm sitting over there, Charlotte. Okay, great. Um, so yes, I didn't, I didn't miss you as much as maybe you thought I would, but... Uh, here, here I am. So I've got a couple quick, quick announcements because all of our announcements are in our bulletin. So, uh, and they're also up on the screen here. Uh, we've got uh, this thing happening soon. So make sure that you buy stuff. I think that the pickup collection is next Sunday. So make sure that you make that a priority. Um, but our big announcement here is uh, Tom and Sandy Pekka had their second daughter on Tuesday. Uh, and for those of you who want like the vital stats, it, her name is Reagan Eleanor June Pekka, and she was born on Tuesday, I think that was October 26th, and she was weighing uh, seven pounds and 11 ounces. So it's a very exciting, so uh, we're really pleased for um, Tom and Sandy, obviously, but also Paul and Pam, as they celebrate another, another grandchild uh, in this world. So. Um, that's, that's all the announcements that I have. The rest of them are in the bulletins. Uh, but this morning, as you know, uh, when you came in, uh, we are having communion this, this Sunday. And so just in an effort to prepare our hearts uh, for communion, I do want to read a passage out of uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, and it says this. It says, Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never uh, take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Isn't that awesome? Our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. And then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. So you are being made perfect. You are forever made perfect uh, as you are made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. 
For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Never again sins and lawless deeds are remembered. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's pray. And then I'm going to invite uh, Rick Ma. He's going to come up for something, for some purpose, <laughs> which, which is a complete mystery to everyone. All right. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for um, your love for us. Um, Jesus, your love existed before creation. Uh, as we were being dreamed up by the Trinity, uh, Lord, you you loved us, and your plan of redemption was already in place there. Um, Lord, we thank you that you redeemed us, that you counted us uh, worthy to be uh, made holy by your sacrifice. Um, Jesus, uh, if we could only get a glimpse of how precious we are in your sight, God, I believe everything would change. Uh, the way that we approach life, the way that we approach you, the way that we approach sin, I believe would be so drastically different if we had a glimpse of your love. And so, Jesus, as we reflect on your sacrifice today, as we reflect on your goodness, um, as we are, are touched in our hearts by worship, we pray, Jesus, that you give us that, that insight, that glimpse of, of how loved, how accepted, how desired we are wanted, or we are by you, God, uh, and that that would change everything within us. God, when the enemy tries to whisper in our ears, trying to tell us that we're unworthy, uh, that we are irreversibly messed up. Uh, Lord, we, we remember the truth and we stand in the truth knowing that uh, we are so precious in your sight that you redeemed us by your very own blood. So we thank you for that, God. I pray, Lord, that a spirit of celebration would fall upon this place today, uh, that we would know uh, that we are chosen, that we are loved, uh, that we um, are able to stand holy and blameless in your sight, God. Um, we pray, Lord, that uh, a high emphasis would be put on your goodness, your holiness, and your love today. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless this time. Lord, let that be uh, first in our hearts as we think of you this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray that everything, that the distractions, God, as far as things not going right, God, or even our self-awareness, God, would fall away so that we're able to focus in on your perfection and your beauty. So thank you, God. Uh, you're good. We pray these things in the awesome name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Rick, if you want to, you want to come up. I'm going to give you this mic because he, he, I don't want you whispering in my ear. Okay, that would be weird. That would be super weird. Uh, hi, I'm. Uh, I don't know if I should turn that up or not. So I'm Rick. Um, I'm one of your board members. Uh, believe it or not, um, I uh, I think I missed a meeting and ended up. Uh, so today we're, we're doing something that uh, we probably sh could have done or should have done um, early in the month of Pastor Appreciation um, Month. But I'm going to put that on Steve because he wasn't here for most of October. So <laughs> it really wasn't our fault. I'm taking no responsibility for that. Um, at the same time, I'm very happy and excited that they got a chance to get a break. Um, so basically we have a, a couple, we have a gift here for Steve and Charlotte and also for John and, um, and I think you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you guys forgot what a console is. Oh, you didn't. There's no way you forgot that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start with Steve and Charlotte. You guys can stay there until I, Tell you, tell them everything that they need to know about you two, all of the dark secrets. All the dark secrets. Um, I I have been blessed um, personally with being able to work alongside the two of them, uh, between the board and uh, youth, uh, as well as um, just the morning daily, the Sunday stuff, the and whatever else is kind of going on. Um, I've been able to to work along them and see their heart and see see the see the struggles as well. So this pastor appreciation month, I think, is probably probably even more important than um, than other ones we've had um, because this last year and a half has been ridiculous, and each of us have been impacted by that 
on our own. And we've kind of looked at it and went, you know, I, I'm just struggling. Like, I, I, I don't even know why, right? Like, um, but all of our struggles are actually end up landing, have landed on our pastoral team. Um, just the craziness of trying to put uh, an in-person service online um, and learning the technology and improving it and trying to make it better. Uh, all of the changes that happened with the restrictions, um, those restrictions uh, were changing weekly, sometimes daily. And uh, Steve was the guy who was responsible for sorting all that out and making sure that First of all, that you know, trying to figure out the science in this case, okay, what do we need to do to keep people safe first? And on top of that, what do we need to do to make people see that we're keeping people safe and, and make people feel comfortable with coming to whatever it was we were doing? Um, and how do we comply with the regulations to make sure that you know, we're following Romans 13. It says, you know, they put people in power over us. God did, and we need to follow some of that. Um, then there's dealing with the blowback of, you know, just un not unlike the government, every single decision that's made, there's people criticizing you from both sides. And, and that was happening with Steve and Charlotte and, and, and um, John and Kathy as well. So every, every kind of little incremental change that happened, there's the, there's the actual, there's the worry of what blowback could happen, what, how bad it could be, what people would think, what, how, you know, who's going to call, who's going to do what. There were the actual calls on top of that. And then there's that, you know, having to just figure out what to do next. So they're doing that all through that. Beyond that, the actual running of the original church, like the church stuff, there's a, they're shepherds. And, and there's that, that, that thought that there's a bunch of people out there we're not connecting with that are hurting. We know they're hurting because, you know, we're, we're dealing with, you know, our church life. And then kids that are supposed to be at school, that aren't at school, that are supposed to be doing homework, that maybe aren't doing homework, right? So there's, there's all the, the home life stuff. Um, there's all the questions about whether you should be hanging out with your actual family, you know, extended family, all that, right? So there's all that pressure. And then on top of that, there's, you know, the, the true love that um, our team has for us, each of us, and, our, and us as a group, and the pressure that they felt to, to be the ones that help you. Well, they're trying to, they, they need the help too, but it's their job, right? God has given them the job to be mentoring us and to, to be comforting us and to be doing all that. It was a ridiculous year for them. And um, I, anybody who has, has been around Steve and Charlotte over the last six months um, or more basically has seen that there's been a toll, like there, it's, it's been tough. Um, and uh, so we really do owe, first of all, Steve and Charlotte, and I'm gonna talk about Dave and Kathy in a minute, or not Dave, I'm talking about Where's the gong? <laughs> it's a total <laughs> gong. I'm gonna say some really nice things about them because I'm gonna have to. Because uh, of the, yes. So we're going to get Steve and Charlotte to come up. Um, we have a, uh, a gift basket by the looks of it. And, uh, yeah, so you maybe have to come up the camera. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. We have to do this politically. I have to be seeing Jersey. Yes. <laughs> Everybody can see. Everybody can take a picture. Wait, Margaret, hands on. I mean, uh, hands on for the pictures. Yeah, there it is. There's nobody's taking pictures. There you go. All right. Just see you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We could see something. Okay. Um, I think that, like, I would say, 
certainly 100%, it's our heart um, that we would have done all those things we are just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You just don't think you did. Right, okay. Yeah, you um, so we have been really yeah. feeling with you and for you guys over the past year and a half as we've been trying to figure this all out and sort it all out. And we know like everybody was spread so thin and it was hard to love the way we really should have loved during this time. And, um, so our hearts were definitely for all of you guys. Um, and it's a little humbling to hear Rick sort of talk like that because, you know, like we, you know, it was just really hard. <laughs> it was really it was hard to figure out how to do it well. So, um, you know, so like, I feel like, yay, we're so great. No, we really just owe you all a big apology too. <laughs> so I mean, sorry that we weren't perfect in this time. And thank you for your graciousness to us as we try to navigate this time. And we're just very grateful. So thanks for loving us. We love you guys a lot too. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, you don't have to apologize for not being perfect because Amen. what we love about the two of you Amen. is that you're authentic, Amen. right? It's yes. not, we, if, if you were perfect, uh, you well, you wouldn't come here for one thing. <laughs> I don't think we want you to lead us because that, we're not about perfect. We're not, we're, we're all broken. We all have junk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all we want is, is authenticity and to see that you're trying, really, that's it, right? Yeah. And and, um, and bring cookies once in a while. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's what it is. John and Kathy. <laughs> John and Kathy. Oh, there. So so John and Kathy. Um, John John came on as um, an associate pastor um, in April, May. In last year, uh, last, last year, last fall. Okay, so um, and without with without the two of them helping to support Steve and Charlotte, um, I don't know if you remember the National Enquirer pictures of people self combusting. And usually in their bathrooms, like back from the 80s. Um, that's what would have happened to Steve and Charlotte. Um, John and Kathy were, were the sounding board, were the, were the support, um, were the, the, taking on some of the load um, that, that Steve and Charlotte were really feeling was weighing them down. Um, a big part of, of what uh, John and Kathy have, have done, um, again, is, is you know, doing the live stream with, with um, Steve. So he wasn't sitting here looking at an empty room wondering, is there anybody <laughs> listening to me at all? Um, is there any feedback? Is there any? And, and that, those conversations that they had as sermons um, were great for all of us. Um, it, it was it was great for Steve to have that support. Uh, it was great for John to take some of those things so that Steve didn't have to have it every week. But I think one of the one of the biggest things that John was able to do was was to be the connector, to be the the pastor, pastor. The pa that's the pastor is the one who reaches out to people, as opposed to the teacher. So he he was the one who was connecting with the people in the, the congregation. Um, which took that that load off of uh, Steve and Charlotte. It connected us. It helped. It helped each of us as a, as an organization, as a, as a as a church body. But it also took away the stress of, oh my goodness, we're failing because we're not connecting with the people, and we don't, you know, we, you know, and, and the more you think that you're failing at connecting with people the harder it is to actually pick up the phone and call people because you think you're a loser, right? So um, he took that away from Steve and Charlotte. Um, how, mostly. Because uh, they, they're going to, Steve and Charlotte are going to still have that, that we're not doing as much as we could or should and all that. That's just the way they're built, even though all of us go, you guys are rocking it, right? So um, I want to thank John and Kathy uh, for 
for preventing um, our pastor from ending up in the National Enquirer, uh, <laughs> self-combusted, uh, you know, in the church building or wherever, um, and and connecting us and leading leading a you know an online uh, group that so many people have appreciated as well. Um, we we were blessed that you were brought to us at a perfect time. You you uh, carried a role. You're carrying a role and still doing that. Um, that we. We absolutely need it. So God put you in this place for that purpose, I'm convinced. And uh, we are all blessed because of, of you doing that. So we have a, a gift here as well. for mixing up names because he's, he did that on purpose for me. Humility is important. Anybody who's been around me knows I'm constantly mixing up names. So uh, we're yeah. for these. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks for loving us. Okay. Now we get to listen to their awesome worship. Well, I'm also very bad with names, so <laughs> I went to the same boat. <laughs> um, anyway, why don't we stand together? Um, there might be a, a couple of new songs, maybe, to some people, but um, yeah, just hoping that, you know, even if you don't know the songs and you just want to listen a little bit, just uh, just to kind of focus on some of the, the lyrics and, um, yeah, just, just pray that they, they speak to you this morning. <laughs> Take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go, lifting my load again. Let's take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go, lifting my load again. Well, there you go. Lifts in my load again. Oh, take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go. Lifts in my load again. Oh, take a moment to remember who God is. Let's sing my Lord again. There you go. Let's sing my Lord again. Oh, no longer am I held by the yoke of this world. Oh, come on, wander the yoke of Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is so light. This burden is so light. Sing no longer. Oh, no longer am I held by the yoke of this world. Come up under the yoke of Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is so light. His burden is so light. You lift in my load. You lift in my load. You lift in my load. 
Hallelujah, singing hallelujah. 
affection, our love, and we just ask that your, your spirit and your presence fill this place, and speak through, just to do the, through Steve, and just speak to our hearts, and we give you praise, amen. Have a seat, guys. Oh. <laughs> Suppose there was a group who set out for a fishing trip. The group was led by a guy who they trusted would lead them to fish. fish here. He led them to water, but the group became full of excuses for why they couldn't fish. Some people came on the trip dressed the part and full of great fishing stories, but never seemed to do anything. Some claimed they did not have the heart for fishing. I can't fish. Look at the worm. This is too cruel. But you know it's a rubber worm, right? Some said the work should be left to those who were more skilled in the art of fishing. Carl, he's really good at casting. Shouldn't he be doing all the fishing? No, 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 you can do it. It's really simple. Look, some claim that fishing was not their gift. Oh, yeah, uh, fishing's really not my thing. It, in fact, it scored a zero on my spiritual gifts test, so... No, <laughs> oh, we could still really use you. Before the guy could finish, Carl interrupted him. I think I got one! Hey, great! You mind helping out with some of the others? No, it's okay! Carl was more impressed with catching fish on his own than he was in helping people out, like Greg here. I got a small problem here. My line's a little tangled up. Oh, goodness. How in the world did that? Some of the people fishing said they just 
didn't have time to fish. Matt, where are you going? Oh, yeah. I, I have an appointment. Um, this thing that's going around. It's okay. I got a, I got a stick. It's doing great. It's great. Whoa. And some people, well, they just have problems. Hey, my hook's caught on something. What's it caught on? <laughs> if everyone did their part, imagine the fish that could be caught. I miss having, well, I missed having the opportunity to do videos when we were outdoors. I'm going to move this mic. It's going to be noisy. I'm sorry, everyone. So, how is everyone doing? <laughs> You're, like, worried about what's going to happen next, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, we're going to be continuing our series. Um, as you can see on our wall here, we're in a series that's called... Um, the One Anothering series. And uh, the series, just to kind of break it down really quick for you, it's based out of Jesus' command in John chapter 13. Uh, and so in John 13, verses uh, 34 and 35, uh, Jesus says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. So not a new command to love uh, one another, right? Not a new command. That was kind of foundational throughout throughout scripture, uh, but the way in which we love each other is new. Uh, Jesus becomes our model on how we love each other. Then Jesus goes on and he says in verse 35, he says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So basically what this is, this one anothering series is um, breaking down that big command of Jesus to love one another into kind of smaller, more manageable pieces. Uh, because some of us, we, were, we never met Jesus physically. We didn't uh, see his love. We didn't experience his love firsthand. And so what the apostles did and the uh, authors of the New Testament is they took this big conceptual idea of loving one another, and then they broke it down into some actionable sort of pieces. And so over the last three weeks, we've been looking at some of the one another's that are found in the New Testament. Now, uh, Scripture actually has... Uh, over 60 one another commands that kind of came, come from the same, same root. We've put them up on the board here uh, just so that we have a visual of our obligation or our desire or our right uh, to love each other in these sort of fleshed out sort of ways. And so this becomes for us very, very actionable things uh, for us to take home. It's like, oh, I can really work on, you know, one or more of, of these areas. How many of you guys, when you look up at that board, you think to yourself, well, I could really use uh, some help doing that. Yeah, put up your hands. And uh, some of you are like, well, I actually do, I excel at this and I, I need to do it. I need to do it more. So the cool thing is the one and others are actually penned, not just by Jesus, but all the, uh, the New Testament authors. So uh, the apostle John, Peter, and Paul, and also the author of Hebrews. So you know that this whole one another's concept is a really sort of big, pervasive sort of thing, something that we need to be taking seri seriously. So the one another commands give us insight of what it's like to be on the receiving end of love. How many of you guys have been on the receiving end of love before? That didn't feel very, it didn't feel very loving. It was kind of outside of this. Anybody? It's like, I'm loving you, uh, and so I'm gonna tell you these really mean things about yourself. <laughs> And I'm not going to really support you in any way of making change happen in your lives. I've been on the receiving end of that before, folks. Um, but it gives you an idea of what is owed to you as far as love is concerned from one another. And it also gives us an understanding of what we are called to do in loving each other. So this is a, a, a twofold sort of thing. So sometimes if you think that, uh, Steve, you're getting a little bit demandy here uh, in the way that you're talking, think oh, I am actually entitled to receive this love and this type of love as well. And then that makes what I say a little bit more, you know, <laughs> easy, I guess. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyways, um, so this morning we're going to build on what Pastor John spoke on over the last two weeks. And so John's going to come up and he's going to share a synopsis of what he spoke on in the last couple weeks. 
Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. I think I'm on. Oh, yeah, there I am. And uh, yeah, so Steve asked me to do a recap, and I think, what did I speak on? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got a chance to look at, at, at Mark when he talked in, in chapters 8, 9, and 10 about the three times when Jesus begins to announce that he's going to suffer, he's going to die, and be raised. And that spark, that showed the motivation, the agendas of his disciples. And it was quite quite revealing that their motivations, their idea was not that. Their idea was, well, who's the greatest? Can I sit on your right hand or your left hand when you get into glory? All these things that Jesus kept bringing back saying, no, no, it's counterintuitive. The kingdom of God is, if you want to be great, you got to serve. you got to serve one of that little word, right? Kind of in the center on it. we got to serve one another. We talked about how, you know, we need to look at the scriptures like a mirror and think, well, why did Mark put that in there anyway? And to cause us to say, hey, are those seeds in me? And so we were, we were at least I was challenged anyway, big time, because I really identify with the disciples. And so, yeah, again, just setting us up to say Jesus' call is counterintuitive and kept bringing them back to even like serving children. What does it look? To be great, it's by serving. Yeah. Amen. That's good, yeah. And so it's really difficult. Uh, one of the things that challenged me the most about John's message is to actually take the, the whole idea, the whole concept of, um, selfish motivation or self-interest out of the equation as far as service is concerned. Uh, how many of you guys were, like found that that was like super or uber challenging? Because sometimes what we do is we, we say, okay, there's an opportunity to serve, uh, but then we temper uh, this opportunity to serve with uh, what am I going to get out of this opportunity to serve? And what John was really like pushing uh, over the last couple of weeks is to actually sort of try to remove self from the equation so that the whole selfless uh, motivation uh, kind of rises a little bit to the surface. surface. So that means sometimes taking opportunities um, that have nothing to do uh, with serving you and using that as an opportunity to serve others. You guys tracking? All right, and that's a very difficult thing to do because unless you're a person who has incredible um, knowledge of self, it's really hard to separate um, what is selfish motivation from why I do the things that I do? Uh, but that's, again, one of the things that, that Jesus calls us to. So uh, this week we're going to be uh, looking at a passage. It's out of Galatians chapter 6. So if you have a Bible, um, I'm going to encourage you guys to turn there. Galatians chapter 6, uh, verses 2 and 3. And so we have a phrase in our household, and it is, uh, this is the phrase, part of the family, part of the team. Okay? Everybody say, part of the family. Part of the team. And basically, we uh, adopted this phrase as our, get, or as our kids are getting older uh, to give them the understanding that uh, they don't just, uh, they're not just part of the family to receive things from the family, the blessings of being part of our family, without contributing to the, the needs of the family. And so basically, when our kids got to a certain age, we started giving them roles and responsibilities in the household so that they wouldn't grow up to be entitled little brats. Because the world does not need more entitled little brats. Um, and so we need to understand that everything that we receive as a human, whether that's as a, a citizen of our great country, uh, or as a, a Christian, or as a member of our family, uh, we don't just receive, we don't just become a sponge, we actually need to, to give it back. We need to contribute, because that's how... That's how the world becomes a better place, to be quite, to be quite frank. So we did this to, uh, in an effort to curb entitlement. We've made our kids' participation in household chores part of our expectations. If you don't do this, then you don't get this privilege of being part of our family. So if the kids want to enjoy the privilege of being part of the family, they need to pitch in to help out from time to time. And so just like a family, guess what? The church also has... Uh, benefits, uh, benefit of belonging, of coming and listening to uh, and engaging in incredible worship, uh, right? Uh, the community of the believers, the support and the prayer that you get, um, the friendship that you get, these are all benefits of being part of a church community, but being part of a church community also has its obligations. Do you guys know that? 
<laughs> yes, you do. And so I'm giving you the, the part of the family, part of the team talk, and that's kind of part of the, the role today, right? So like, like family, there are chores and responsibilities that each member of the family needs to undertake because otherwise, you know, mom and dad, they start getting tired and they start getting frustrated, uh, just like in a household, right? So Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. All right, if you have a Bible, turn there because I don't want you to think that I'm just, you know, speaking some nonsense. Um, and it's, this is what it says. It says, share one another's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. Share one another's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Oh, <laughs> this like mic drop moment there from the Apostle Paul. So what does it mean to share one another's burdens? Okay, there are times when kids make a mess uh, in, in our household. Uh, quite often I'll come home from work and there are toys all over the lawn because uh, Callum has had his friends over and they're uh, shooting arrows or shooting Nerf bullets or they've got balls out or, or whatever. And sometimes in order to strengthen his arm, instead of calling him out and getting him to clean up his own mess, sometimes I go out there and I clean up his mess for him. And what I'm doing in doing that is I am sharing his burden. So he has the mess of ownership of these things, of having friends over. But every once in a while, I strengthen his arm by bearing his burden in doing that cleanup, right? So sharing someone's burden means diving into someone else's mess and making life more bearable for them, okay? So this means doing something for somebody else that is, again, devoid of self-interest, okay? They made the mess, but I'm going to step into the situation and I'm going to clean it up for them. I'm going to try to lift a burden from them so that they can walk a little bit straighter up. So it means taking care of things that aren't your fault or aren't your responsibility. Okay? So the law of Christ, like, think about this. It says, when we bear each other's burden, we obey the law of Christ. Okay, the question of sin. Sin. How many of you guys sin? have sinned, okay? The law of Christ means that Christ came in and he took that burden of sin and he carried it himself. And so when we carry each other's burdens, when we step into situations that we have no responsibility for and take responsibility for them, we are fulfilling the law of Christ because what Christ did is on the cross, he took our burden of sin and he lifted it and he put it on himself and he carried it himself, okay? So that's why it's called the law of Christ. Jesus bore our burdens, uh, the burden of our sins to the cross. So sharing someone's burden equals obedience to the law of Christ. Just a chapter earlier in Galatians chapter 5, Paul says this, For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And so we've got these two uh, twofold commands here, right? One is bearing each, other, their, uh, each other's burden and therefore obeying the law of Christ. And the other one is the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And so when we think about uh, Christian morality, Christian spirituality, it's actually not wrapped up in being a good moral person. It's actually wrapped up in action. It's wrapped up in loving, actively loving each other, actively serving each other, actively carrying each other's burdens, right? Self-sacrificial sac self -sacrificial service is of monumental importance in God's kingdom. Exactly. Monumental. Exactly. It is at the top of the stack, okay? Self-sacrificial service is obedience to Jesus and God's law, okay? I once held the belief uh, that Jesus would be obeyed and honored and pleased if I avoided certain sins, if I read the Bible, prayed, attended church, and tithed. I thought that I was fulfilling the law of Christ in doing that. And you know what? Those are good things to do, but that's not fulfilling the law of Christ. Fulfilling the law of Christ is carrying each other's burdens. It is serving one another, right? So these two simple verses completely destroy that understanding. Jesus is obeyed, honored, and pleased when we serve each other. When we serve each other. That's where Jesus is. Is, is made manifest, right? And so when Jesus commanded, he, he, uh, he washed his disciples' feet, and he says, I want you to do this for each other. He wasn't just telling them to wash each other's feet. He was saying, I want you to serve each other in the same way that I served you in this way, right? Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, 
but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Okay. So Jesus, who is the creator, sustainer, and he's supreme over all creation, did not come to be served. Isn't that uh, monumental craziness, right? The God that like spoke this universe into existence, created the earth, created you, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Right? And I know on Sunday mornings what we do is we gather together and we worship him, and in such a way we serve him, uh, but he actually he loves turning it, turning it around and serving you. That's what really pleases him is when he, when he turns it around and he serves us. Um, he did not come to be served, but to serve, which is why Paul says in verse 3, he says, there is no one in this universe that is too important not to serve. That's basically the nuts and bolts of what Paul says. I've met many people, many church people, who think that they're above serving. They think, you know, I've been going to this church for 50 years, therefore I've put in my time. I, I don't need to serve anymore. How many of you guys have met church people who are like that? It's like, you know, whenever the door is open, they want something from you, but they don't want to lift a finger in order to help you, right, in any way. And some of them think that they fulfilled their obligations. Some of them think that they're too busy, right? Um, some think that their obedience only involves being morally upright, like that uh, wrong understanding that I had at one point in my, in my life. But they're only fooling themselves. They are not that important. You're part of the family, but you're part of the team, which means you're obligated to serve, right? Bearing burdens for one another means taking on responsibilities that aren't ours for Jesus' sake. Okay, we take on responsibilities that aren't ours for Jesus' sake. In the context of the local church, each of us bears a responsibility for the health and the well-being of each other. Okay, if somebody's struggling, it's not just uh, on the pastor or the leadership team to care for this person who's struggling. It's up, uh, upon the, the, the community of the church to bear that person's burden, right? Each of us bears a responsibility for the health and the well-being of the church, of the gathering, okay? And so if there's somebody who is uh, a gossip or a busybody, right? Uh, it's uh, uh, incumbent upon them to actually change their ways for the health and the well-being. Of the church. Every member should be functioning, should be ministering, and should be serving. So in the context of the local church, this means taking responsibility for areas of ministry that might not necessarily impact you personally, which means like serving in the nursery when you don't have a child that's in the nursery, right? Or serving in preschool or Sunday school when you don't have children who are in that ministry, that's just how we bear one another's burden. Because if we are bearing, because we have uh, an obligation or self-interest in that, if we are serving in that way, uh, then it's actually not bearing one another's burden, right? It's just bearing your own burden, uh, which is fine too. You're supposed to do that <laughs> as well. All right, so uh, let's go to the next slide, Rick. Uh, Benjamin Franklin once said, if you want something done, ask a busy person. If you want something done, ask a busy person. So leaders are often the busiest people in an organization. Um, and that's that makes a whole lot of sense. If I own a business, um, then I have an obligation to be the busiest person in that business because I want to lead that business in, in a very important way, right? Uh, so, But leaders are often the busiest people in an organization, and they get a lot of work done. And churches are no exception to that rule, right? Uh, the 80-20 rule, you guys have heard that rule, right? Have you guys heard that before? The 80-20 uh, rule means 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. Or in a business context, 80% of the revenue comes from 20% of the clients. 20% um, of the people do 80% of the work. But God's church was actually never designed to be like that. It was never designed to be like an 80-20 rule where the leaders are um, burning themselves out for the sake of everyone else. Uh, in fact, Paul likens the church to a human body, and he says that each member has a role to, a role to play. So e Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, it says this, Jesus makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And so there's those words there, each part has a role to play. Each part has a different skill. Each part brings a different um, factor to the assembly, but it is obligated, each part is obligated to do the work 
so that the whole body becomes healthy, so that the whole body is able to be healthy, growing, and full of love. And so our leadership team here is responsible for much of the, the work and the ministry that happens here at the church. And that's, and that's good, and that's the way it should be, right? We have 100% of our attention is really put on, on serving and loving this community. But sometimes we get so bogged down uh, by small tasks that could be easily handled by others that our kingdom impact as leaders and as a church suffers. You guys know that? That's true, right? Uh, every once in a while, if you are, are so busy doing something and, and nobody else is helping you out, sometimes the, the long-term health and the vision of, a, of an organization can go downhill because they're busy arranging chairs or, or cleaning or you know, doing things that could be easily handled by others. So the early church actually found themselves in a similar predicament. And this is what I'm gonna to use to kind of close up and then I'm gonna invite Charlotte to come. So the apostles wanted to move the mission and the vision of the church forward. And there's a story in Acts chapter six that outlines this. So if you get and you have your Bibles, uh, be a good place to, to turn. But what happened is the church in its mission and its vision became stalled because there was a whole lot of small sort of obligations that were placed on the apostles and they weren't able to uh, do the work of actually pushing the, the vision and the mission of the church forward. And so day-to-day uh, -day tasks were keeping them from doing all the things that Jesus had called them to do. So we're going to just quick look, quickly look at Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. Um, and this is what it says. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, um, so the church is growing, it's exciting. Like, it wouldn't it be exciting to be part of a church like that, yeah. where, like, there's new converts coming in all the time. People are turning their life over to Jesus. There's this excitement, but there's this incredible mess as well because people are messy. Uh, when people uh, come to Jesus, they, they don't just all of a sudden, all their mess falls off of them. That doesn't happen. That's not realistic. People bring their mess with them and quite often it takes decades for them to kind of start working through it. Um, and so as the church is growing, um, it's becoming bigger, but it's also becoming messier. And so the apostles, these 12 people who were commissioned by Jesus to carry on his work, uh, their workload, even though they're celebrating as people are coming to know Jesus, uh, their workload is increasing and increasing. And so there's rumblings happening, rumblings of discontent. And that never happens in the church context. So I don't know what's, what's happening here uh, in, in the early church. Uh, it says the Greek-speaking Greek believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers. So, you know, so there's like this... This cultural fight happening within the church as well. Gentiles are getting saved. Hebrews are being saved as well. And there's this like cultural conflict happening. It's a real mess. Um, so Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. Okay, so the Greeks are saying, ah, oh, Hebrew ladies are getting more food than, than our Greek ladies. And some of our Greek ladies are going hungry, right? So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers which is a cool thing to do, right? Uh, and they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. <laughs> Which is like, you know, like it's a, it's a pretty basic sort of complaint, right? And so brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom, and we will give, give them this responsibility. And so what do the, the, uh, the apostles want to do? They want to raise up more leaders, right? They need more shoulders to put the, the weight, the burden of the church upon because they need to focus and hone in on the thing that they were called to do initially, right? Um, and then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. So the apostles, they identify a problem, right? They didn't have the time or the energy to do all the work that was in front of them. And so the apostles place the responsibility uh, on the group of believers to find uh, willing servants who were well qualified to continue on the work uh, that they had been doing. So those who serve need to be qualified. They need to be uh, respected, full of wisdom, and the Holy Spirit, right? And the cool thing is when the, when the body serves, so this group, big church comes together and new leaders are identified and they're giving responsibilities over certain areas of the church. And when that happens, leadership, it just continues to multiply because I imagine that those seven leaders probably had a number of helpers that were helping them out with the distribution of the food. I don't think that the food program was sitting 
heavily upon their shoulders, I think that they were raising up more people uh, who, uh, who were helping them out as well. And so when the body serves, it frees the leaders to lead. And so verse 5, it says this, everyone liked this idea, which sometimes doesn't happen. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't happen. Everyone liked this idea, and so they chose seven to serve, and they give the details on who those seven people were. Verse 6, it says, These seven were pre presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So you notice what the apostles don't do here. What don't they do? The apostles don't choose the seven. Right? The apostles identify the problem, and then the believers work together to, to solve the problem. Right? Isn't that cool? I think that that's a really neat sort of take it away. Because that how... How much of the vision or the mission of the church would have been sidelined uh, by uh, by the if the apostles had to have the responsibility of choosing leaders? Because that's hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to identify and raise up leaders, and so they gave that responsibility uh, to the believers, the, the whole group of believers. So these seven were presented to the apostles, who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. And then look at verse seven. This is the result of what happens as leadership. As people who take responsibility for bearing each other's burdens, uh, this is the result of it. It says, so God's message continued to spread. So there's something in redistributing leadership that enabled uh, the mission of God to continue to go forward, right? The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. So when the family of God comes together to serve, it enables God's message to spread. And this simple delegation of responsibility had far-reaching impact for the kingdom of God. So even though sometimes it seems as though I'm doing a mundane sort of stupid responsibility of arranging the chairs or opening the windows and turning on the air purifier or putting the songs in the computer for, uh, for worship or running the live stream, so sometimes we think that that's kind of a menial sort of responsibility or doing the greeting and writing down people's names. And actually what it does is it releases the leaders to lead. And when the leaders lead, uh, they're able to cast vision, and the church is able to grow, right? So the gospel spread, number of believers increased greatly, and leadership itself multiplied. Anyways, I'm going to have Charlotte come now, and she's going to share the next part of what we're doing. And so think about take-at-homes and uh, application. Here, here we go. You okay? Hi, Charlotte. Everybody say hi to Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have to put my mask on to do that. Okay, so is this on now? Uh, that microphone is if the light near your hand is. Uh, well, it's, yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, hi, I'm, I'm feeling a little frustrated. I'm just going to pray and then we can move on. Oh, and emotional. I mean, I didn't say anything. The emotions are a troubling, a troubling thing for me. <laughs> I wish I could not be so freaking emotional. Anyways, um, Jesus, we just uh, are grateful to you for this body, for these people, um, for John and Kathy, for the board that serves alongside of us. Uh, we are so, so grateful. And Father, we ask Holy Spirit that you would lead us and direct us uh, right now as we move into just this next little step of things here. And I pray just for your peace and calm. Thanks, Jesus. Amen. Um, so I think, like, you know, we we need the church. We need to gather here. And I think some people, oh, this is going to be hard for me. I think some people coming out of COVID, some of us are so grateful to be here. We're, we, we feel the awesome privilege of gathering together, having not gathered together for a while now. And then contrary, I think there's a few of us that went, that wasn't so bad the last year and a half. Maybe we don't really need the church that much after all. Maybe we'll just go out and like, we still love Jesus, but we're just going to try and like serve the world. And uh, But I feel like it's so obvious to me coming back after COVID how badly we need this and how grateful we are to be able to gather together as believers. And Steve was telling me, I wasn't here, but Steve was telling me that um, when Dave Brigand shared at some point the last couple months, when he just got up to the front, he was still just like wiping away the tears because this was the first time he had worshiped together with other believers, you know, since COVID started. Totally relate to that. 
I, I just feel such, and I think, and I've, so that's made me ponder, what is it about coming here Sunday mornings that is so important to us as believers? And I think if we're doing the work of the saints in our community, we're tired and we feel like the other all the time. You always feel like the oddball, like the one that doesn't fit, like the one that's not going with the flow. And like Sunday morning is a time when we get to be with our people, with our other oddballs that feel that Amen. all through the week, everywhere else, right? And so we're so grateful to come to this place and we go, oh, you are sound, Jesus. I am sound. Look at all these amazing people that trust you the same way I trust you, that know you intimately the same way I know you. I'm not making this up. This is real. And you're doing amazing things in the lives of people, right? And so the church is a very, very important thing. That being said, this isn't really what we're supposed to be about, right? This is our reprieve. This is what we run back to for safety and a break. And we as a church are supposed to be loving our community and impacting the world around us and sharing the hope that we have in Jesus. But if we don't do this, we can't do that very well. But this takes a lot of work. Sunday morning takes a lot of work. And we as a staff find that we're chasing people down all the time. Can you help? Can you serve? Can you do this? Can you do that? And a lot of times, we are the response we get is, I really can't. I'm too busy. I don't know if I can make it work. I've been doing that my whole life. I'm tired. And we just want you guys to know, we are all those things too. And we need our body to work with us so that we don't spend our lives going, we let Sunday mornings good for us. You know what I mean? Like, we're, bad. we're passionate people that have a purpose in this world to serve and share Jesus. And this is so important, and we're doing this, but we really need to do more. And if we, as a leadership team, are spending all of our energies getting Sunday morning going, a, a couple, there's a couple ramifications. And one of them is um, our community, our vision, our impact as a church becomes very small. So that's one thing. And another thing is we're going to feel really tired, really burnt out, really frustrated because that's not what we're called to do either. But somebody has to do it. So we're doing these menial tasks and letting all the like exciting stuff that we wish we were doing not get done because we're so focused on like who's going to teach Sunday school this week it's coming up you know mm -hmm. so um Kathy would you mind grabbing my water bottle I'm really parched um thank you. okay so all of that being said um we are very grateful to have a body of believers around us that sincerely love Jesus and sincerely want a greater impact in our community and world. We know you guys are there, but we also know that um, you maybe don't know exactly how we're feeling. And so this is our chance to tell you guys how we're feeling and our chance to say like, you know, Steve and I are in our early forties. It has occurred to us recently that if we don't do what we're called to do, our time is slipping away. Right. And so we're going to look back. We're going to be like 70 looking back at our lives going, well, we ran a good church service, right? And like, we need, we want to have our lives mean more than that. Um, okay, so that being said, you guys can see our list. We have family chores that need to get done. And it is time that we are going to, as parents, if you will, of this family, we're going to divvy up some chores so that we don't have to figure it out every week who's doing what. Everybody's part of the family, part of the team. We're gonna carry one another's burdens. We're gonna make church the thing we do naturally, not the thing we work at. And we're gonna work at loving our community and changing the world around us. Okay, so we're gonna, just, we're gonna do this right now. We're literally gonna ask you guys <laughs> to sign up on the spot. You might think this is manipulative. It's not manipulative. It literally is just our job, right? All of us. <laughs> and, I, and like, okay, so. We, we were batting around the idea of taking a page out of Acts chapter 6 and just saying, okay, here, here, here's the problem, guys. And then we were going to walk across the street and like hang out and then let you guys fill this in. But we thought we'd, you know, help you out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so like, for instance, this morning, 
Margaret was supposed to be up here because she had like pastoral appreciation stuff going on. I need to be here. John and Kathy are going on holidays. We don't have enough time. We can do this family meeting. We gotta get the family meeting done. Okay, well, I'll teach the lesson. Margaret, you can come down. We'll like take teams out of school. Like that's what it's like. That's the reality of what it's like when we don't have people that are like, no, I'll help, right? So it's tiring. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We understand that you guys aren't capable and qualified at maybe any of these things, but also, <laughs> Before my kids learned how to wash a sink, they never knew how to wash a sink either, right? So I had to teach them and train them to wash a sink, and now they can wash a sink. And so I was going to say toilet, but I don't do that yet. Um, and so here's, here's our list. We know you don't know how to do it. We know you're not passionate about it. We know you don't feel like a special calling in your body that's like, yes, Sunday school. Like, we know you're not feeling like that because you're not, like, lining up to serve in those ways. But... It's still chores. It needs to get done or the family can't run. And so we need you guys, even though you're not excited about nursery or Sunday school or sound, we need you guys to take it on even if you're not excited, even if you don't feel called, even if right now you're feeling like this sense of dread, like, are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious because the job that needs to get done, somebody needs to do that, right? So if we want to keep functioning, we got to get this done. Okay, that being said, I put sound at the top. And here's the other thing. You've heard it a million times. Many hands make light work. That's what we're looking for for Sunday mornings. We're looking for light work for all of us, right? So if we all step in, take on some things, then we can get this job done. Um, also, I want to say to you that when Steve and I were standing up here receiving our gift basket, Steve whispers in my ear, we'll just tell them like the real thanks is coming later. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what we Appreciation Sunday, so. <laughs> This is what we actually need from our body. You know what I mean? Like, we are grateful for the love that you've given us, the gift baskets, the treats. Like, we, we're so grateful for all that. But if you want to serve us in the way we need to be served, this is what we need. Okay. So, sound. Who's up? <laughs> Dylan. Uh, three times. Three times a month? Okay, well, we're hoping to share the load a little bit more than that, but thank you very much. We can, we can add people who are already on. Yes, and we, we purposely left it all blank so we could be like, oh, Rick Law. Like, so, like, we see that hand. Who's next, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see Roy's hand as well. Okay, let's do that. Okay, Roy. Where's Roy? I didn't see him in the He's building. He's not here. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> 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 <We're pretending. laughs> okay, thanks, Trent and Roy. Okay, Trent. Somebody told them they were doing this today. I don't know why they were here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That looks pretty good, Charlotte. We got four out of. You is know, that enough? I would like to see five. I feel, Liana. So I can figure out the sound. Right on. Yes, you can. Thank you, Liana. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Hey, Charlotte. Yes. There, I think there's one thing that we we need to remember. Yes, please, right. Uh, back before COVID, when we we were always looking for some hole to fill, like it, it it's not, and that's the same everywhere. Right? There's always a need in nursery. There's always a need in Sunday school. There's always like there's always needs. At the same time, when we went through the list of the people in our church, they like a, that. It wasn't an 80-20. It it was 80% of the people were doing something. Right. Right. We are a church of servers. Absolutely. Part of the issue we have at this point is we're just starting to get back into this yeah. stuff, and we all haven't done it. So really what we're kind of doing is saying, hey, we're restarting. Yes. Let's let's get it going again. Yeah. Right? Let's yeah. let's get it. Like let's let's get these things filled the way it was in the past and, and better, right? We want it because this is our opportunity to kick it off and do it awesome, right? And and it's taking a load off of you guys, mm -hmm. but which is which is absolutely super important. But really, it's a, uh, hey, look at the thing you get to help with and be part of, and it's and make it awesome. Right? Yeah, because I'll say in our staff meeting, Margaret was like, let's take that to, that approach. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I don't want to take that approach because then people are like, I'm not excited about it, so I'm not doing it, right? And I think, like, true, and I, I hear what you're saying, Rick, and I yeah. think it's true. I think we have a lot of people who have good hearts that are, like, right involved serving. But I also think we have others that feel like it's not their job, right? So... I hear that and I'm grateful absolutely for all that, but we also just really need to realize that like these are chores, like they really are. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but I but I agree. We have I think like it's not disparaging because our people want to do what's right, and like we see that. And so, 
but maybe we just need to remember what's right. And I understand too, coming off of the pandemic, we are trying to launch again and all that. Absolutely, yeah, I hear all that, but I also think like, there's huge blessing in service. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's not, okay, you got to wash the dishes because you have to. Mm -hmm. It's God wants you to come and help, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be blessed for that. Mm -hmm. Even though it feels like when you're prepping, it feels like chores, mm -hmm. it, you're going to be blessed. Okay, absolutely. You yeah. will be blessed, but nobody wants to wash the dishes. Hey, you hear what I'm saying here, right? No, but this isn't washing the dishes. Okay. This is this is serving God. Okay, this but I'll tell you it's washing the dishes. I know, I wash a lot of dishes. It is washing the dishes. Okay. Okay, we're moving on. Okay. The next thing is but I hear you, Rick. I understand what you're saying, and you have received the blessing from Jesus. So I want to say that, but I also want to remind you of Jesus in Gethsemane, right? Take this cup from me. I don't want it. Right? <laughs> Somebody's gonna die on the cross. I don't want to. I don't feel called. Like I don't really feel excited about you know what I mean? But like that's what servanthood is. Washing the feet. Okay. The next thing is nursery. So what nursery entails is we really just need one nursery worker per week right now. And that's sitting down in the nursery room, watching the youngins, and that's really all it entails. There's no diapers right now. There's like interacting, playing, giving them toys. If they stumble, pick them up. Like it's very, very simple. Um, and you, anyone in here could do it because we've all we're all adults that can take care of children. Um, but we, again, we want to find the best fit. But the truth is, sometimes we don't have the best fit because we're a small church, right? So we don't have like people that are super eager to work with kids necessarily, but somebody's got to do it, right? So, um, are you up for that list? Awesome, thank you, Liz. Hi, Jess. Hi, I can do it. Jess, you're gonna help with nursery. Yeah. Should I show me like <laughs> Yes, but Jess on the nursery list. I'm not sure what this means for the long-term progress of ECC. Put on the list fast, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thanks, Jess. Yvonne, you go to the nursery. Thank you very much. Ooh. Jill, thank you, Jill. I challenge a man to apply for the job. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The uh -huh. first ever challenge. That's right. Tim Bring was the best nursery worker. He was. Tim was amazing. <laughs> he was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, Lorraine, you're up for that? Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, uh, I'm going to slow your name around. Right? Um, yeah, she is particular. Did you, get, did you put AU? Oh, no. Did I get it right? Oh. I should let them know they can learn. Right? L-A-U. Oh, I put one extra R in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's Laura Rexy. Awesome. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, so Sunday school, there are two different roles in Sunday school. We need two people down in Sunday school every week. Teacher. We need a teacher and we need a helper. The teacher, it does require preparation. It does require work. The, the helper can show up and just be extra hands, and that's awesome. Um, but I would say... Probably Sunday school would take me, I would say, two hours of preparation to, to do it well. So it is work. It's not something that just kind of happens. But um, yeah, Leanna, you're, I can definitely you're up for that. Teach. Teach? Yeah. Leanna, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Is there a curriculum or do I just create it? There's a curriculum. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, even I can do it, so it's simple. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, you're up for Sunday school? I'm a teacher, yeah. Malcolm will oh, teach yeah. you. Thank you, Malcolm. <laughs> Who else is for Sunday school? Yeah, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Holly. She just a asked. Helper. You'll be a helper? Yeah, I don't have two hours. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, Holly, that brings something else up. I know you don't, okay? So I'm not I'm not trying to say anything. That brings up another point that's an important point though, is we have first fruits as Christians, right? Where we need to give our first fruits to God. So I know a lot of us are gonna say we are busy people. Everybody in our culture and our society is busy. We 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 are, we're very, very busy people. But we have to remember that Jesus calls for the first fruits, like the first offering. And Holly, the reason I say, like, I get I get that you don't have two hours, you are busy, you're mothering. But Holly is also an evangelist. She is sharing the love of Jesus in her role in her day-to-day -day life. So she's she is serving the church in other ways as well, and hopefully roots too. So there's things going on there, but okay. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because I think that's an important point to make that. Yeah, John. Sure. Can you just remind him that as a board, we're also taking care of this until like, Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we did say to the young families, as we're getting rolling again, we just want to give the young families space to come back, to get back into a routine of church. So we're not asking people to jump right into Sunday school right now. 
the um, the board has served you guys in that way, and, and it, it felt beautiful and important that we do that. So we're glad to do that, but we're going to carry on until January. So yeah. Sunday school is not going to start until the new year. The board is going to keep taking on Sunday school, and like, it sounds like they're rocking it. Um, like like um, William and um, Robin's kids, Evan and Adeline, is it Adeline? Yeah. yeah. Evan and Adeline were like midweek last week, like, uh, can we not go back to Sunday school this week? We really need to get to church this Sunday. Like, we got to fit that in, mom. Like, so, like, it's pretty cool that I can. smell like that, too, to make sure I was coming back. They were so excited. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's good to know. Thank yeah. you, Holly. Yeah. So, like, thank you, board members, for stepping in and taking that on because that's a bit tricky and annoying. But yes, we're very grateful. Okay. So, and other Sunday school teachers who would like to step into that? Yes, Debbie. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Amazing. Cool. Okay, anybody else feel like they can step into that role at this time? I will be a helper. Okay, now. thank yeah. you, Rick. Rick. I'm, I'm more than happy to help a couple of times. I've okay. been a teacher forever. Thank you, and I think like... It's something I'm passionate about. Right on. I'm happy to like take okay thanks Leanna yeah and I think that there are people that aren't here right now too right and we're going to try and send out like the family meeting portion of this to be, to ask people to really watch it because we don't want to just use the body that's here but the whole body so I think I know we'll fill in some spaces with that too um live stream so live stream is what Rick is doing today hello people at home and Rick is communicating with the people at home right now do they're, people they're really quiet <laughs> <laughs> are they watching there's Six people. Do I need to point my finger at them like a little bit? <laughs> Maybe. I've encouraged them <laughs> to speak up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Jay? I can do it. Live stream? Right on. <laughs> Put Jay on. And there is training for all this. Yeah, we'll we'll work through the training because that's we're passionate about that. Yes, Debbie? Yes, I'd like to sign up for that. Perfect, thank cool. you. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, Caroline as well. Okay. okay. You just, did you say that, Caroline? I was thinking that would be really good for you. That'd be good. Like a good fit for you. This is a really low list. Yeah. <laughs> I we're done here because Colton does it too. Okay, awesome, you guys. This is such a blessing. We're so grateful. And then the last thing on the list is worship. And so we know that there's people out there that have musical gifts and abilities, and maybe some of you that we haven't like really recognized yet because you're you know like closet musicians or something, but the body of Christ needs you. We need your gifts. So, so awesome. Okay, right on. So Derek's gonna sing. Liz, you're a musician. Sing. All right. Liz is gonna sing too. Maybe you should write in the role they're gonna play too. We need guitarists. Who's the closet guitarist? Like closets are kind of small. Is there, is there lessons for that? Cody. Cody. Cody and Jess. Yeah. Is there lessons for the guitar? <laughs> <laughs> There's lessons for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> you need that yeah. 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 Okay, any other musicians? Do you have to come to church to play? I'm just thinking of my husband. Yes. He does play guitar. Yes. So I'm just saying, mm -hmm. and he's teaching music this year. Mm -hmm. I'm a big school, uh -huh. so maybe I can have a Okay, so can we keep Mike in the back of our minds and maybe we'll so. talk to him? Right. Or see? Okay. I think he would be happy to play some mm -hmm. guitar if he wasn't singing. Okay. That's the only thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. That might be a nice challenge for him. Uh -huh. And get him to come. Get him to come to church. <laughs> right on. That'd be awesome. Did you, put, did you put Mike's name on there? Uh, Leslie. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of people who already do we this. Can I add them in? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We see that hand, Leslie. The whole cubby gang? Just, yeah, put them all on there. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take up a lot of spaces for it. Maybe we'll just <laughs> put Liam on there as well. Yeah, Liam. Yeah. Any other musicians out there that we don't know about? Wesley, Joey, and Yeah, I think we have a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. And we realize, guys, that there's lots more that makes a functioning church than Sunday mornings. We know that there are some of you that are probably feeling like bad right now, like, oh, I really can't serve in any of these ways. I suck. Like, that's not at all it. We realize there's a lot more going on to the whole body of the church that isn't just made up here that you guys are doing. Um, greeters and the yeah, greeters. Margaret said don't put greeters on the list because she's got a good handle on those, and some of you guys are doing that. And, 
And I think like this week you guys had your first men's repair clinic and like a That's lot cool. of you guys came to that. You brought friends with you to that. You worked on people's equipment. So if you have broken equipment in your homes that need repairing, like let them know. They'll come swing by, pick it up even for you or whatever. But we realize it's a lot broader than just this list um, and you're serving in lots of ways. Uh, but again, we just need to get this stuff checked off the list. So we're so grateful. Okay. You also probably need to send out the list. Did you add? Did you add Rachel as well? Liam, you can put Liam and Rachel. They're they're a team. Right on. Okay, so you guys, I'm gonna pray and then I'm gonna pass things back over. We're gonna get Cody to come up and then we're gonna participate in communion together. That will be the close. Yeah. You know, just before. Yeah. We, we should. Uh, each person that signed up, someone needs to take a lead in scheduling each yes. one of those. Yeah. So maybe take it away and think maybe that's you can take that on as well. Right, yeah. I think we were kind of just thinking we as staff would do that for the first little bit, but I okay. think that that's right. It would be good to transition to somebody scheduling all that. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you, Rick. I'm happy to help out. I don't have a church family in Hamilton yet. Okay. They're important for me to do something. Right on. Thanks, yeah. Wayne. That's awesome. You rock, Wayne. Okay, so thank you guys so much. We really didn't know how this was gonna go. I didn't, I didn't lose any sleep over it, which I think is amazing. But um, I just was kind of like, Jesus, this might work, this might not work, I don't know, but we're gonna try. And so we're just so thankful to you guys for um, stepping up and taking it on. And now, but now, like exactly, so it goes like this. The lifting is ahead of us, yeah? So we just hope that you guys will just carry through and. The blessing, the, bless, the blessing is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So let me just pray. Jesus, thank you for um, the work that we've got accomplished this morning and just getting volunteers organized to move forward. And Lord, we do pray um, just for your peace. And I just want to receive your peace right now too in front of all these people because I know I can go home and beat myself up for the way that I manage this time. And so I just receive your peace, Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus, we just want to be the kind of church you want us to be. And so, Lord, as we get freed up from this kind of administrative stuff, we just pray that you would open our eyes to what's coming for us as a church, mm -hmm. that you would really bless us as we love and serve our communities that we are part of God. And um, we pray for greater impact. We pray for awesome things to happen. Um, even just small things, Jesus, like we're not expecting like, you know, but we just... Let us see some forward motion and the relief and the gratitude that comes from knowing we're serving you well. Um, so we ask for all these things, Jesus. God, for the people who have signed up today, we just pray your blessing. Um, all the good stuff that Rick Ma was talking about, Jesus, that that stuff would just settle into them, that they would receive joy in being your servant and doing the right thing and just serving these ways. Um, so we're thankful, Jesus, for the way that you are so faithful um, to give back to the ones who will sacrifice. Um, so Jesus, thank you for all of these things. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everybody. Yes, thank you. Good work, Char. Yeah, thank you, Char.
last week he let me know that uh, last service was only about an hour long so I'm taking the grace that you guys gave him and we're withdrawing from that bank um, so, yeah exactly so communion um, I'm gonna read a passage from Ephesians 2 
It says, once you were dead because of your dis disobedience and many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, uh, the commander of the powers of this unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the heart of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passions, desires, and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everybody else. But God, but God, amen, amen, is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Jesus Christ. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all that he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. What a beautiful passage. Oh my goodness. We were once dead in our sins, but Jesus rescued us. Praise be to God. So let's partake of communion um, completely aware. Thank you, Jesus. We know that we were dead. We know that we were dead without you. We know that we are dead without you. We thank you that you have received us into your family to be united with you uh, in, in uh, identity, but also in purpose. And so we thank you that you have received us as well into this family, this body of believers uh, who are more than flesh and blood to us. We thank you, God, for the incredible divine blessing and divine privilege, Lord, that you've called us to. We thank you for these elements. Remind us, Jesus, every day of our obligations to walk them out and the beauty that is found in walking these things out. Thank you, God. You're good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So let's take the body of Christ, remembering that we are part of his body, and take it and eat it. Then in thanks for the blood that was shed, it wasn't a, a costless sacrifice. It was a very full of cost sacrifice that he made for us. Let's remember that because of his shed blood, we are part of this family. Thank you, God. So Jesus, we again, we thank you for today. We thank you that you've called us to this thing that's greater than us. Uh, I pray that we would not look at life as consumers, but we would look at life as producers. God, remind us of the incredible privilege of, uh, of um, following you into service, following you into the world, uh, doing ministry in the world. We pray, Lord, that fruit would be born wherever we go. Uh, we thank you for these things, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to remind you right now that we're not going to exit the way that we came in. We're going to go through the side door uh, here. And then if we can um, do our visiting in the parking lot out front, uh, that would be fantastic. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here and putting up with the extra time. Um, and thank you so much for the way that you've loved us uh, over the years. You know, we're coming up on nine years here at ECC, Charlotte and I, which is crazy. Um, but we thank you guys for uh, serving alongside of us. It's been such an awesome, uh, awesome ride, and I know the best is ahead of us yet. So God bless you. Thank you. Yeah.